Hi, today we are going to learn how to classify aircraft using the VGG-19. So these both images will be our predicted images. We, will die to, we would like to predict the classes of these images. So in order to do that, we will download an aerospace images and you can see there are several classes and several thousands of images in each class. For example, let's take uh, this balloon uh, folder that contain different images of balloon and also you can see these helicopter images and basically we are going to download it to our local uh, folders and we will use these images in order to train and transfer, transfer learning technique using VGG19. Once again, I'm browsing these images and these are for example spaceship images so we will train a, a fresh model based on VGG19 and then try to predict two new and fresh images that I've downloaded from Google so let's start first of all we will create a new a Python file let's call it step number one and second of course I will leave a link for the data set so you can download it uh, manually when you extract the images, you will find a file name rename.py. You can delete it uh, so it will not uh, um, interfere our process. So uh, we will Im import TensorFlow as TF. I'm using TensorFlow 2.10. Then this is the path. Um, this is the path for our images where the data set is located on our local file system. Then let's define a batch size of 16 images in each batch. And now we are importing the data, uh, data generator. This imports the Im image data generator class from the TensorFlow Keras processing model, which facilitate the generation of batches of a tensor image data into a real-time data augmentation. We will use a, 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 a rescale in order to div div divide the data by 255. So basically we are normalizing, normalizing the data between 0 and 1. Uh, we will also use data augmentation. So we will enhance our data with the horizontal flip and zoom in some of the images and very important, we will use validation, sl validation split of 20% in order to split the data between train and validation. Next, we are going to load our train dataset. We will use the flow from directory function, the batch size, which is 16, the path for our images. We would like to shuffle all the images. Our target size would be 224 by 224 in order to support the VGG19 and this is very important subset equal training that means that 80% would go for the train and 20% would go for the validation and also a class mode categorical since we have more than one category now let's duplicate it and let's create the one for validation dataset we have to change only the subset and change it to validation. Great. Let's run it. As you can see, we have more than 6,000 images for training and more than 1,000 images for validation. So the image shape would be 224 by 224 by 3. 3 are the three channels, red, green, and blue, and the categories would be eight categories. Now let's define our model. This, uh, this command, he, here is basically the VGG convolutional neural network model. It's, it's a pre-trained model on the ImageNet dataset. So we load this model and specify the parameters like, such the input shape, and also the include, uh, include top False, that means that we are chopping the last layer that try to predict the image net. We would like to refine it for our needs. The trainable false means that we are using the existing weights and now we are creating the model based on the VGG19 model and we are also adding some more layers. We will add regulation by 
uh, using the dropout with the 20% filters will be out of our training. Then we will add a global average pooling layer. And then we are adding our dense layer, which contains the number of categories and an activation function of softmax since we have several categories in order to train and predict. Let's add a name for our model. We will call it uh, VGG19 and let's print the summary of our model in order to see that everything is in place. We have just to fix this parentheses. Right, let's run it. Great, as you can see, we have about train parameters of 4000 and the rest we are using the existing weights. Now let's compile our model. We will use the Adam optimizer and a very low learning rate since our model was already trained. And the matrix will be accuracy. And of course it's categorical percentopy since we have several categories. Okay. Here is matrix accuracy. Great, let's continue. Now, basically, this is the train process using the fit uh, function. This model uh, trains um, using our train dataset and also the validation dataset. And we will run this model trying to, to train it with a 50 epochs. I believe it should be uh, good enough. And after the training, we would like to display the results. In order to do that, we will use the matplot uh, library. So we would like to plot all the history. That means all the, the results of the epochs. And we would like to show the, the four uh, crucial parameters. That means the loss, the accuracy, the validation loss, and the validation accuracy. So we are using the, the plot function in order to display the values during each epoch. Let's give this chart a name. We will call it model accuracy. And also let's put the, the Y label and the X label. The Y label will be the accuracy and the X label will be the epoch's progress. Let's add the legend for all the values, our four values. Okay. And show will display the results after the training. Okay, after a showing our diagram, let's save our model as a .h5 file and let's run it. I have a syntax error. Okay, this problem indicates that I have a, a, a wrong value for uh, the categories. Let's see how many categories. Okay, we have seven and I believe I put the add value. So let's change it from eight to seven. As you can see, I'm typing it as a freestyle and running it. So let's run it again. Great. Now, as you can see, the, the progress of the training runs smoothly okay after the first epoch the validation accuracy is 0 0.3 and it's rising 0 0.4 after the fourth epoch it's 0 0.5 so the progress is seems okay after seven epochs it's 0 0.58 0 0.6 as you can see the progress is okay so I believe that we, we will wait a few more seconds and I think I will jump directly to the end of, of the training. And let's see the results. Okay, watch carefully for the results. You can see that the, there is a correlation between the loss and the validation loss and also for the accuracy and the validation accuracy, a very good results. So now let's test our model with the new and fresh images. 
Let's create a new Python file. Let's call it, call it step number two. Of course, I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can download uh, the code. Let's import the relevant Python libraries like TensorFlow, OpenCV, OS, and image uh, processing from the Keras uh, library. We will use the load image and the image to array to load the image and convert it to a NumPy array. And we also use some functions from NumPy array. So once again, our image size is 224. Let's define the folder for our images. The target of this command is just to grab the name of the classes. So we will load the name of the folders, which indicates the name of the classes. Let's print it just to see that everything works okay. Let's run it again. Wait, okay, here are the seven classes. Now let's copy the our last model, the, the model name, let's load it. We have to load our saved model, so we will use it for prediction. In order to do that, we will use the function load underscore model from the Keras. And just to double check that everything was loaded okay, let's print the summary of the loaded model. So here is the architecture of our model. Let's continue. We will define, and this line defined a function named prepare image that takes the path to an image as an input and prepare it for an inference by resizing, converting it to an array and normalize the value. Then after loading the image and convert it to the target size, we are converting the image to an NumPy array. And then we are using the expand team in order to create batch of images. And this is relevant for our model. And the batch of images would contain only one image. Then we are normalizing the data by dividing it to 255. So all the values will, will be between 0 and 1. And I remind you that a pixel in an image has a values between 0 and 255. So we need to convert it. And next we will choose an image, for example, this Zeppelin image. Let's copy the path for this image. Great. Now let's load uh, this image using OpenCV a function. Now we are ready to prepare our image for the model. So we will run the function, we will call the function, okay. Now the result array will be um, an array of values after running the prediction. So basically since we have seven classes, we have seven prediction values, but we would like to grab only the highest value. So the highest value indicates the predicted class. So let's run it and print the answer the answer value and as you can see this indicates that it's class number two so what is class number two let's use our uh, classes list that we uh, created early and let's grab the name of this class in index number two once again let's print the result So now we are expecting to see a class name. Great, so now we have a name and also we have the index number. So in order to do, to show the, the result along with the image, let's use the put text function. And this helps us to put the name, the, the class name along with the image. We are choosing the, the relevant font, the color, and also the position of the text. 
and we will use the I'm show in order to display the image and wait key in order to wait for the keyboard. Let's run it again. Great, as you can see on the left side we have the name of the class. Let's try it on another image. So now we will use the balloon image and let's run it again. We're expecting to see the text balloon along with the image. Great. As you can see on the left side, right. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You are most welcome to subscribe my channel. Bye-bye.